Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to, I guess, you know, the second or part two of our uh, introduction or implementation of fragments. And uh, in the last episode, we just started our, you know, started converting our two activities to two fragments and we've gotten as far as um, implementing this list fragment and then replacing it with our uh, our second detail fragment, giving it a bundle that contains the, the ID of the tile that was selected and uh, no understanding of the back stack here. So um, this is actually a relatively um, quick fix to the uh, back stack issue. There's actually a function here called add to back stack and you can supply um, a nullable string here. For now, we're just going to say null, but uh, you can sometimes, you know, give it a particular, uh, I guess, name to that transaction, and then, uh, you know, reference it later if need be. But for our case, we don't need to be doing that. So if we uh, now with just that one line of code, it now remembers basically, um, you know, the back stack. And although we are replacing this fragment, the the detail fragment. Or we're replacing this fragment with the detail fragment, uh, it still remembers the ordering. And then obviously if we go back again, it will um, you know, terminate the back stack. So, so that's super nice. However, um, we still have a bunch of stuff to clean up here. So um, in the detail fragment, we actually have our uh, soccer tile that we wanted to reference. So we can actually take a whole lot of this code here and Again, we're going to do Control G. Yeah, see, that's just that's super satisfying. Um, and so we're basically just copying that from the detail activity and implementing it in our fragment because they're basically one to one at this point. Um, and then if we click the Learn More, we can actually see here that uh, everything is, you know, I guess working as you would expect here. Um, you notice there's not as much of a pronounced transition between the two screens, whereas when moving from activity to activity, it kind of um, was a lot more obvious that you're changing screens. So we can you know fix that as we kind of add the polish to things. But basically, what I want to show here is that we have uh, you know this I don't know I guess this uh, this UI coming back together in this new architecture. But one issue here is we have um, still our EPL home, which doesn't make sense anymore. I believe we actually called it here, yeah, club overview. We don't have a back button anymore. We also don't have the menu uh, in the toolbar. So we're losing a bunch of things here. So I guess on that last one, the menu, we have in the activity class, the on create options menu and the on options item selected callbacks that we were to override. Uh, however, those don't necessarily exist in the fragment, but you can do something very similar. Okay, sorry about that. I thought um, that it was actually a function we had to override, but that is not true. Um, so actually the function I was looking for is something called set has options menu, and you pass in a Boolean here. So by, by calling this function passing in true, uh, we are reporting that this fragment would like to, uh, you know, basically modify the toolbar. Um, and specifically the menu. So with, with this line of code, we can then actually um, run our on create options menu and then on options I am selected. Uh, and we could probably, probably just copy this entire thing. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and copy this, put it here. Uh, finish we'll have to um, do something different but otherwise we are going to go ahead and uh, basically preserve exactly what we were doing in the last um, uh, in, in the activity implementation and here we are uh, going to just inflate our menu resource which is called menu soccer tile detail 
passing in our menu. But and we can take this one here. Which do that. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and give this a run, see where we see where we stand. All right, wonderful. So we have our uh, our menu back here. We have our on click working. Okay, it just took a second, but it is working. Um, and then we kind of you know fall back in line with where we were. So everything seems to kind of be coming back together here a little bit, um, which is just really good stuff. So um, I guess just to demonstrate real quick. Uh, if we were to comment that line of code out, even if we have these, uh, you know, additional functions, even though we're overriding those additional functions, um, it's not going to actually do anything here with the toolbar. It's not going to, it's the system's not going to know that this fragment is actually trying to do something. So you not only need to implement these methods, which are, uh, very, very, very similar um, to the activity versions of them, but you also need to uh, call this function first to make sure that, that you're telling the system you're going to handle it. So, um, okay, all right. Uh, let's see if our traditional so. Oh, well, we haven't, we don't have that, but okay. So it is actually retaining the state here, um, which is good and it's working here, except let's just see what's going on here with why that part of the UI looks a little broken. Um, right, that's because on favorite is being clicked and then we're not doing anything about it. So we need to notify this list fragment of um, you know uh, that that something has changed here because our uh, soccer tile adapter here has the listener the the interface for this interaction set to the activity so the fragment doesn't know that the favorite button has been clicked but we need to notify it somehow um, that that is the case so let's see if we can. Yeah, I mean, backstack entry, or let's see if we can. Let's make a little function here that says. My favorite clicked. Go ahead and just. Well, let's pass it in the position because we have it or not. And then we can update this to say notify item changed at position. Oh. At position. And we're actually going to go ahead and make this nullable so that in case the fragment at position zero is not the list fragment, that this, this uh, code will evaluate to null and then this will question mark dot will only run on something that is non nullable. So instead of kind of, you know, operating on potentially something that is null, um, it, it, it wouldn't do that for you. Uh, so there's no need to like check, you know, if this thing is null or not, Kotlin kind of has the question mark operator as a way to, uh, you know, ensure that you're only going to be, uh, you know, in, ensure that null safety, uh, when you're referencing objects here. So, um, Maybe not the most beautiful way to, to do it, but we actually are, uh, you know, notifying the um, the correct tile that it is being uh, updated and whatnot. So we seem to be in sync here, uh, which is fantastic. I think we'll go ahead and and clean up this tile here or the header. So we. Gonna 
that's the list fragment. So let's just actually take that and we'll put it right here. And instead of EDPL home, we're just going to call it club overview. And then, so yeah, it should actually probably operate the same way. So let's go ahead and say question mark apply, set the title. And then we say set display home as if enabled, true. And then we will need to finish, we will need to destroy uh, this fragment. Yeah, how do you destroy a fragment? I wonder if that'll work. Let's give that a whirl. Um, we're going to tell the hmm. oh, I think it's called uh, pop back stack. Wow, it has been a very long time since I've used fragments uh, at this at this level, but I believe that's actually, yeah. And so we have a little bit of leakage from the last screen here. Um, so let's go ahead and clean that up real quick. All right, so Manchester City, we favorited it. We're going to learn more. We'll maybe unfavorite it, and we'll go back. So this, at this point, looks like it's um, basically functioning as we had it before, right? We have our detail view able to interact with any of these elements with either favoriting them or, um, or you know, clicking into them. We can navigate away via this option here. Um, all the UI is set up as if it was previously and we have our back navigation working. You can even handle the gesture navigation to go backwards. So things are kind of molding together here um, a little bit. So um, pretty, uh, pretty interesting stuff. I am happy to report that we can actually now remove this soccer tile detail activity which is exactly what I'm going to go ahead and do. Uh, go ahead and delete it. It has one usage. Uh, we're going to delete it anyway, and that one usage is in this file here. Um, so this actually brings up a point that I wanted to, to make to, to you guys, is that um, you know, if, if we were to continue evolving this app and building this app out, you know, say there's 10, 12, 15, 25 screens involved in this entire application, you would need to have an activity tag for each of them, um, you know, like we had here. But because now we're operating these two screens in fragments, we actually only need one activity, in this case, our main activity. And, uh, you know, we're able to, to manage the different states or, uh, of the UI or manage the different uh, you know, sections that the user can go to or whatever, um, and, you know, do all of that in just one activity. So we can actually condense a few things. We can get rid of, you know, this um, layout file. So you can kind of bring a little bit of just like, you know, the clutter down. And in this example, it's not necessarily the, the most obvious thing, but once you start having, you know, an application that might have a hundred screens or something along those lines, you know, that would be an insanely large um, uh, Android manifest file, you know, it would be a whole lot of uh, individual like screens to worry about um, and for no like true benefit 
I guess you could say. Um, you know, the, the fragment implementation has not only the ability to, um, you know, have like a central location for your fragments to kind of live, that being the, the main activity. Um, you know, so even though we are moving screens here, we can have data, uh, in this case, perfect example, the, the, all of the data inside the app is stored at the activity level and then the fragments actually just reference that and modify that and everything. So, so you kind of get this hierarchy um, between the different Android components and you're able to appropriately store information at, at different layers and maybe make your life a little bit easier at times. Um, one additional benefit, which I'm not going to dive into right this second, is um, uh, is it this one? Yeah, is actually the 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 fact that you can kind of put multiple fragments on the screen at the same time. Uh, unlike activities that just house one particular layout file, you can actually have different parts of the screen if you so chose to. Um, so what I mean by that is if you've ever seen the, if you've ever seen the, you know, like a, a general email um, application where you have, you know, your different uh, conversations here in the screen and then when you click one of them, it kind of changes this part of the screen. Uh, and then you can change to a different email uh, chain down here in, in this UI, and then it'll actually change this entire screen as well over here. Uh, you know, you actually have that flexibility with fragments where you wouldn't with activities. Um, so uh, definitely a little bit more of like an advanced discussion and, and tutorial, but it speaks to the fragments reusability and, uh, you know, something that the activity just can't compete with per se. Um, or at least not as easily. Uh, so, you know, the fragments are just kind of smaller versions of activities, smaller versions of screens that obviously have their own set of dependencies, but you can just very easily, um, you know, uh, change them out, swap them out at the activity level. And as we move into the next part of the, uh, the series, we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit more about navigation components and uh, exactly how easy it is to maybe tie these things to a um, to like the bottom navigation bar that is so familiar in so many applications, you know, namely um, Instagram. I know we've brought it up before. You know, they have five tabs at the bottom, and you click a different item, and then the screen up here changes. Well, all of that is happening, you know, with the um, with with fragments under the hood. So, uh, you know, we will dive into that in the future. But I just wanted to at least bring it to your attention that everything that we have built uh, so far in the activity. Uh, architecture or layout or, or decision uh, can also be done in fragments and um, can be done quite easily. So uh, hopefully this seems to kind of shed light onto fragments and, and make sense. Uh, if there's any questions, please drop them in the comment section and I'll do my best to uh, answer them. But, um, you know, I, uh, I'll see you on the next one where we're just going to maybe clean a little bit of this uh, this implementation up and take a look at a few other things and then wrap up the, the season here. I think we've accomplished a lot. So thanks for sticking with me. I'll see you in the next one.